What's up, guys? Uh, episode two. It shouldn't be funny. It's still funny. <laughs> episode two of What's Up. And it's... This time, um, we're changing it up a little bit. Not so much fun. It's yeah, no, this, yeah, is, this is a, uh, this, this is, this is visceral. a reaction video. Um, yes. So I just watched, uh, the whole, uh, debate highlights, um, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, trying to see, you know, what's going on in the world. Cause I did not watch the debate. I, I tried to watch the first one. Mm -hmm. I got through, I don't know, 20 minutes or it so. It was hard to watch. It was, you, you say like, okay, he's going to be a guy for change mm -hmm. and he's got all these ideas and he's. You know, if honestly, I would think that Trump would be a good president because he's a businessman and America sure. is a business anymore. It's not about freedom. It's not about whether or not we're the best in the business. It's not about any of that stuff. It's it is a business. You've got jobs. Why are jobs so important unless it was a business? It's about taxes. OK, you pay taxes when you work and you pay taxes when you take the money home. So it's a business. He would be good at it because he makes money in business. And I think that he's smart enough to hire the right people for the job. And that would be his asset. He is not a genius. He is not a well-spoken individual. He's kind of an idiot. But if he put the right people in the right positions and his cabinet was well-funded, as long as Condoleezza Rice wasn't in there, you know, everything would be great. I don't know. Uh, or what's her name? Omarosa. Uh, sorry, I got everybody confused. But it's, he would be good as a business leader. Sure. But watching this video about Are you talking the locker room talk yeah, the locker from room last talk. night or whatever night's from Friday. debate. I think Friday's it debate. Fr Friday. It was like, he's trying to be, he's trying to, you know, backpedal and say, you know, I didn't do it. I, I wasn't, I didn't mean what it was. But that is, in a sense, what locker room talk is, is it's, Maybe in some way, shape, or form, he respects Billy Bush's opinion. I I don't think so, but just being like the grossest guy in the room sometimes is like a it's an achievement. It somehow puts you on a on a station of well, if I was gonna be, I'm I'm such a man's man that I could get any woman yeah. I want or something like that. And I mean, what he said was pretty bad. Um, the, yeah, the the comments he makes are very aggressive towards women and even talking about the woman who's who's coming to the bus before they actually get off the bus and everything like that but to the fact that this video is from 11 years ago and right. it's just now showing up like really well that's i think that's the, the problem with that is is it's on purpose yeah right like that's that's the thing post the media that's the thing <laughs> that makes it so frustrating when you watch this like if you look at and I'll, and I'll say this, I expect today, today, I expect, unless something significantly changes, I expect Hillary Clinton to win the presidency. For sure. She knows okay. how to play the actual That's game. what I think is going to happen. I agree with you in saying that America should be run like a business. I don't think it is, be, is being run like no, a business. No, it's I think it's being, it's like being run like by one of the businesses that needs to get taken over. Yeah. By somebody... There's an internal coup able, always going on. Able sucks. to, like, take it over. But, you know, you've got all these political appointees. The VA doesn't run. The post office doesn't run. The FCC doesn't run. Our ha healthcare system doesn't run. We're fighting too many wars in too many places. George Carlin used to say, all America wants to do is bomb brown people, which is not true, but is essentially playing out a lot in our politics. And so you've got all these significant problems, and it's also $20 trillion in debt. That's, that's a lot of debt, right? That's 20 million billion. He says, he says 20 I'll million, bring the money back. I'll stop. Or 20,000 billion. Stop in paying debt. for people who are paying for us um, to have NATO be fully funded by America. All versus, kinds of stuff, right? You know, and he has these ideas that are money centric. And if you could get away from the fact that. You still have the, to go through Congress. The non-producing, yeah, like even as a, if it had the finger on the button or whatever, and that's what everybody keeps coming around to is like, that seems to be her fallback point is you don't want this guy with the finger on the button. He wouldn't blow people up. Everybody knows that if you launch nukes, you lose the world. It just happens that right. way. You know, and I don't think that anybody, I honestly think it would it'd play out like a, 
like a bad Wesley Snipes movie or something like that where he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to push the button. And somebody would be like, no. And they just pull the trigger. But it's he would be better suited because she is just going to continue to play the political game. Sure. If he can throw this wrench in. Like, I have said this since the beginning. Even if he got elected, not going to be a two-term president. He won't be. He would No be. way. No. He would uh, be a one-term president. If he could make it through the four years, you know, without sure. impeachment for something else. For whatever said, else. You know, yeah. like, but words speak louder than actions when it comes to if I'm trying to make you look bad. The rest of the time, like, this guy has made money, whether he's lost it here or won it back there, um, whether it be Vegas or some hotel in the Palm Springs. He's got or, more than he started with. Right. He has By succeeded in that form. But <laughs> she had some. She he's got a lot more. She was just the um, madam, whatever. I don't know, Secretary of State. Secretary of State. But before that, she was uh, the senator from... No. She was a senator from New York... Bill Clinton's wife. And then she was, well, yeah, she was the first lady. She was the first lady first. Bill Clinton was in. And then she got into politics after the fact. Right. Right. It was, her mission was, we're going to make this, you know, a monarchy or something. Like, we're going to keep it the family name. It took 12 years to do it, but I'm getting back in there. Like, that should in some way, shape, or form be illegal because what would she have, despite the job knowledge? Like, I know that she knows how to work the system. But that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing for, for the rest of us because it just means that she's going to stay in power in some way, shape, or form. And do you want, like, her husband, super huge adulterer, all the women who came out against him, and she's like, you know what, I'm going to stick around with this guy. That's a bad decision. I don't care. People can't be fixed in that situation. So, so in, in all this, you look at this and you say, okay, Hillary Clinton's got all these scandals, right? The Clinton Foundation, the, the money, emails. the emails, Benghazi. She's got all these things that she's been involved in. And she's in still not really, in jail. That were really, really bad. And then you've got Donald Trump, right? And the, the the biggest thing that they've got on Donald Trump is he says a lot of mean things. And he's kind of a he's kind of a d bag. And that's a hundred percent true, right? And yes, they manipulated. Intentionally, the people in charge of this video, the people who were sitting on it for 11 years, released by the Washington They watched Post. it. They watched it. They knew exactly what it was, and they made a decision not to release it. They made a decision not to release it. That editor who sat there in that room and watched it and saved it, yeah, and didn't destroy the file, did that on purpose, right? For 11 years, and then sold it or handed it off or bought it off or whatever they did. That was on purpose to release it on the Friday before the debate 11 years later and say, he said this, so he must always feel this way. And maybe he does. Maybe he does. Sexual assault's not okay, but somehow we're okay with Bill Clinton sexually assaulting women because it was a long time ago. But we're not okay with Trump saying that he wanted to. This was a long a, time ago. A long time ago. Right. Like, the, I actually heard one guy said. Uh, why is Donald Trump bringing up these women who were assaulted by Bill Clinton? That, you know, Hillary didn't assault them. Well, Hillary went out and actually said that the women were lying. They weren't telling the truth. They I'm were sure just some out, of them were. I mean, they were just possible. out for money. That's entirely possible. But she actively attacked the people who were accusing her her husband while in office, right? While having power as governor of Arkansas. And as president of the United States, she actively attacked them. So it's not like she was not involved. Right. And now we've got this, oh, you know. And again, Donald Trump is very likely to lose. Unless there's a massive turnout of people who hate Hillary Clinton. And there's a lot of people who hate they, Hillary Clinton. Even if, well, I mean, they talked about it being rigged and stuff like that. But the system isn't, it's not the machine that's rigged, it's the system. You can't. You cannot disrupt the way that things work because it makes too many of the people in power uncomfortable. If you, if he got in there and he disagreed with enough of the people, like he would definitely be impeached for something. It's like getting he's got fired the from dudes in his own party. He's got the dudes in the Republican Party now saying, "Oh well, my Senate race is at risk, and I might not get elected." Right. So I'm going to so back I'm, off of him. I'm going to I'm going to publicly yeah. come out. 
and say that I won't vote for him for president. Right, when they previously said they would. When they previously said they would, and they're applauded for their moral standards, yeah. right? But when they have offers. When they have <clears throat> political viewpoints, and I know I've talked to several people, like, I, I will not share, like, my own political, I just won't talk to my political viewpoints. I won't do it. Because it's too controversial, and because we know that we have people that we work with who watch this show. But, like, the fact that there's this assumption that there are not conversations that are offensive between people in private is ridiculous. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Men do it. Women do it. White people do it. Black people do it. Hispanics do it. Children do it. I've talked Every to single person on this planet has had a conversation that would have been offensive to somebody. If they did. And if it was recorded and you played it back to their boss, they'd probably get in trouble. Yeah. Like, people have offensive conversations, and that does not make them bad people. It means maybe he trusted the wrong person. Maybe he, maybe he does hold views that are offensive. Maybe he has done stuff that's wrong. I mean, he certainly had failed relationships. There's plenty of people who are, don't have any sort of position of power who have been in failed relationships. And many of them for the same reasons, or even worse reasons, like abuse and things like that. If you could get me proof, maybe more than just words, like two guys talking in the truck, and don't forget, there was another person there talking the same amount of nasty sure. that he was, and that other person still has a job today, you know, like he is running for a super powerful position, and he, I don't think he was going to win anyways, but this tells me that they got scared. That well, there was definitely some fear involved. Yeah, and he never this. said, like, Donald Trump has never said, I'm a great person. No, he just says that he's he, got he, good ideas. But, but then he says in the, in the debate reaction, they're asking him, he says, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, it wasn't right. Yes, I'm embarrassed by it. No, it wasn't right. And I've never assaulted But then he, then he makes this point, and they completely blow p past it. He said, you've got ISIS chopping people's heads off, burning people alive, drowning people in cages, and we want to talk about some mean stuff that I said 11 years ago. Yeah. And... As, again, as a person who I feel like I'm pretty broad-minded politically, I'm going to say that I agree that having a regime that's torturing people to death because of their religious faith, because of their, their just this desire for power, is a much, much bigger deal to me as a person yeah. than whether or not the guy says mean things. I fully expect him to have had him said mean things because he's a person. Right. He got caught on tape doing it. He's probably said other mean things on tape at other points. He's probably hurt a lot of people's feelings. He's like old. Yeah. Right? He's, He's probably, been around since he, the worst of times. Right. So, look. It's we, not okay. It's no. not okay. There is no excuse for having said it. If you got caught saying that in any other context, you would be in trouble. But I am 100% sure that people say mean things all the time. And again... Like, he refers to locker room talk. Yes, that's traditionally viewed as a male uh, thing. Guys but it's not talk. just a male thing. No. Men and women, black and white, every single color of skin, every single person talks about inappropriate stuff at some point with people that they feel comfortable and close to. Because you can make jokes out of serious things in life. And then still treat people with respect. You can make jokes out of things that are inappropriate because people laugh. Right. Right? These are the same, this is the same Democratic operatives who will fully support some of the comedians in the in the world who say the absolute most crude things. But absolute. it's a joke. And you but know it's it a beforehand. Joke. And in this case, he might have been joking and he might not have known. Like he definitely obviously didn't know that there was any sort of uh, recording going on because sure. it was it was off camera. There wasn't supposed to be anything like that, and so they got him in a situation where he has no recourse now except to say I'm sorry and try and move on. Yeah, because even if he doesn't win, he's gonna be a rich guy. He's yep. gonna have this money, and he's now got his eye on a political position, which could in turn mean that he's gonna be able to use his money. To he may come back. Buy right, I super pack. We saw all Mitt, this we saw uh, Mitt Romney. I think he ran for president three times. I think Mitt Ram Romney ran for president three times. Rick Perry was run twice. Yeah. Right? So, like, 
These people, once they have money, once they have power, they pursue it. I don't know. I just, like, in terms of my reaction to this lock, whole idea of locker room talk, I think, yeah, it's locker room talk. Is it right? No, it's not right. Is it offensive? Yes, it's offensive. Does it disqualify him from being president? No. Hell no. It's not the same thing. And Hillary Clinton has a super impressive resume. You put that resume on any person, people are going to say, like, that person's got a lot of experience in government. But she's got a lot of bad experience in government, too. Right? She's so made, she's both of them choices. Both of them are considered some of the worst candidates we've ever had. I think it's a setup, honestly. You but Donald Trump is running on good and they sure. they couldn't have made it this far. But he was able to destroy them emotionally or politically. He or? beat them because people want change. Right. The the country desires a change. They feel like the system's unfair. It's like, do you hate the DMV? Not anymore. Like, honestly. if you work at the DMV, do you hate going to the DMV? If you don't work at the DMV, do you hate going there? Because there's this feeling of bureaucracy, and those are good people, right? There's nothing wrong with those people. But it's so slow to yes. solve a problem that's so simple, right? I should walk up, hand you my license, say I want a license plate, and you should hand me back a license plate. And I should give you some money. It to some total should take less time than buying a hamburger at McDonald's, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It takes forty-five minutes or an hour or two hours of your time to jog around this little scavenger hunt they've got set up for you to get a license plate. I well, and to get that changed, I mean, you need more turnover. Like their whole job is to take money. So the only way we're ever going to see significant change, and I think even if Donald Trump, like Obama got elected on the idea of hope and change. Right. He didn't change very much with the exception of the Affordable Care Act. He, had some, was, he had some executive orders. It is as a person who's been paying for insurance for the last 10 years, the Affordable Care Act did not help me. I have worse coverage. I have to go to specific doctors. You have a higher deductible. I have a higher deductible, and I pay more per month because of the people who are not on welfare were are on welfare. Before I was able to use my benefits, go to the doctor, pay my money out of pocket, and as a relatively healthy young adult at 22 years you old, you were okay. I was okay. I rarely ever went, but I still paid for it, and some of the money that I paid went to insurance that other people weren't able to afford themselves. And that's the way that the system works, is some people get the benefits and some people don't. There's poor people everywhere you go. Yeah, and, I've had and, relatively good insurance. And I can tell you that since the Affordable Care Act, the year right before the year uh, of the Affordable Care Act, and since the Affordable Care Act has gone into place, every single year, my coverage has gotten worse. And it's gone my cost price. has gone up. Every single year. So the argument that if you get more people into the system, somehow that's going to fix it, I don't buy it. Well, because I don't not everybody's on the Affordable Care Act. Everybody else is under private insurance and you can't afford. I but, the private insurance company, afford it. but the private insurance companies are making money hand over fist. Oh, for sure. They're never going to stop. They they had to approve Their profits went they're, up. They're able to fund the people that are going to make this happen. They, they got enough people behind them to uh, lobby for them that only the parts that they, they wanted passed, which all ended up being, yes, we're going to hand out insurance to the people who can't afford it, and we're going to do a subsidized thing, but the people who can't afford it are going to pay more now. But that comes directly out of taxes. It's not like that money is just appearing magically to pay no. for people who don't have health care. Somebody else has to Somebody pay. else is paying the and bill it for it. it happened that way before. When they didn't go, when they went in an emergency room visit and they were hurt or shot or stabbed or robbed or whatever the case may be that their injury was so severe that they needed $75,000 because you can't get anything cheap. It's not they like got care. There's, there's no value menu at the emergency room. There is not a value so menu. You, you walk in there from your recent trip to McDonald's, you're expecting you know to get some sort of option when they say, this is all you're going to get. We're going to fix you and we're going to let you sit here for five to 10 days and then we're going to kick you out. Oh, did you have insurance for that? No. Okay, well, here's a collection bill, and that person's in debt for the rest of their yep. life. I know many people who've had this problem. Sure. $50,000 in medical bills because they had a kid with no insurance. Did the Affordable Care Act fix that? It didn't exist at that point. 
Has but it fixed now, it since then? now they still have the bill. They just, you know, it's like, oh, well, we'll cover twenty thousand of it. So fine. Now they're only on the hook for thirty thousand, which they still won't. Have. So making change and way off the topic of Donald Trump and locker room talk, but he, Obama didn't fix what he said he was going to fix. So they all run on a false principle. Almost every single one of them. Yeah. And I think that her talk, Hillary's talk of. I'm going to do better, and now that I have so much experience, I'm going to fix it. Her experience is the same as the 20 people before her. No one has made any difference. There's been a few people who have said, like, you know, we need better education for the kids. Excellent. Why do we still have poor people? Why do we still have people who cannot support their children? Why do kids still not have the education that they need? That's given to them. All this has been about is we need more jobs, more education, more money for the poor, and the people that are stuck in the middle. I'm not well-to-do, but I work for my money. And I'm trying to be as nice to the people as I can. I know I let people in on a green light every once in a while, whatever. But I don't expect that I should be forced to give up You know, my, my freedom, my money that I work for in taxes so that somebody else can not work. Yeah, I don't think that people who are non-producing should be given everything. I think that some of it, the old system used to be, you couldn't pay for your meal, you do dishes for five hours. Yeah. You know, you can't pay for your, now you get your a, surgery. Now you get an EBT card and every, every single business is incentivized to add things to the EBT that will make the problem worse, right? You get an EBT card for, for food. And you buy and you can Mountain Dew. And you can buy Mountain Dew with it, which kills you. Right. Like, you get an EBT card and you can buy you can buy Red Baron pizza and Cheetos. Papa Murphy's and you, EBT. I mean, the, the thought process that we're not solving the problem by giving people additional freedom. And I, and I agree. I mean, that it's it's really easy to go into just a long political rant. But at the end of, at the end of this conversation, I'll just close with my opinion, just my part of my opinion, which is look, Donald Trump said a bunch of mean things, jackass, right? Shouldn't do it. Shouldn't say it. Hillary Clinton has a whole bunch of stuff in her past that is known, proven, absolutely understood what she views, what she thinks. And she's still standing on a stage and not in cuffs. Well, she she's she's not. broken actual laws that yeah. are set in place by people in her position that say we need to protect ourselves from the baddies. So let's go ahead and put these laws in place, and that'll prevent the the corruption from existing. Other and people go to jail. It. Other people go to jail when they forward confidential information. And in his in his other mind, people go, is that other people he's lose a their security. Other people lose their he security. He gets to do plans. whatever he wants with women. Eleven years ago, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. It's just not even on the same. It's not even on the same page. So, but that, it's all the same in the sense of bad is still bad. Bad is still bad. You cannot be bad and then just like expect that that means that you're good. You can change. You can become better. Yeah. And so if he should have done that. If you're he should have said, yeah, I said that. And you know what? I actually was confronted by this person or this person or this person. I was faced with this life decision. Or I was faced with this experience, or I recognized that I had this as a habit, and so because of that realization, I made a change in my life, and I did it nine years and two months ago. Right. And now I don't do that anymore, and now this is the way that I react. So yes, that represented how I felt. This was the event that happened. Now this is the way I feel. If he had done that, he would have. He would have weathered that store much better but as it was he said well it would have been better if he had i mean i don't even think giving this guy time to react would have made a difference he kind of probably not. speaks from the top of his head and he doesn't really think about what he's talking about and which is why a lot of people who are more cerebral don't like him right but i think about it in the big picture sense it doesn't matter who's sitting in that seat honestly. i think it i think it does but i well, think if that you're gonna the push, people who are the people who are pushing really 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 I'm saying for the two arguing it for have. two reasons right now. If you're pushing hard for Trump, you're probably doing it for one or two reasons. The first reason is change. You, the first reason is change, right? You want to drop a bomb on the system and hope that something blows up a little bit. Not because you hate the country, but because you want the change to occur. And you don't see the people who get elected year after year after year 
following their campaign promises to make change. So change is the number one reason I think people are pushing for Trump if they're still doing it. The second issue I think for Trump is the business aspect, right? Mm -hmm. He's been successful in business and he's tough and he's not going to back down. And so that looks a lot more aspirational than we should, we should be afraid of Russia or we should be afraid of ISIS or we should be afraid of these other countries. And instead of being afraid of them and being ashamed of what America has done as a country, we're going to go fight. Right. Now, not, that doesn't mean war. That means... It is. It is it, war. It, it does it's war against all the people who are bad for our country and bad for our belief system, which is we need to be the free people and we need to have an, be an example for the rest of the world. We currently give aid to everybody who needs right. it, in a sense. And some people are taking advantage of that, and that's in home and out, out abroad. People are taking advantage of the system. And if he gets his way... He, he says that he'll be able to shut down the greedy people, the people who don't really, they're not contributing. And if you have to contribute, like every single part of our tax problem or our funding issues that we have in this state where they want to put in railways or they want to um, raise the minimum wage or something like that, it's if everyone gave a little bit, even the poorest person gave a dollar, you know, combined, we make a bigger dent than we do as individuals. But the way that that money gets handled, once it's out of my pocket and it's into somebody else's hands, they handle it poorly. Yeah. They say, well, we all need raises first this year. You know, why is it every single term? It's like, well, the, the Congress is not solvent, so we're going to shut down for a week and go to our Hampton homes. Stop paying people so much and stop making it such a job for incentive because if somebody else is in control of me, I want them to suffer as much as I do yeah. because then they'll know, hey, if I'm working for $75,000 a year, like I would say give them, you know, it's a lot of responsibility and they got to travel a lot and it's probably really stressful and you, everything like you that. Know the argument. Give them more time. So you guys, I don't know if you have heard this, but this is the argument, okay? We have to pay ourselves a lot of money because otherwise someone might be able to bribe us into selling our vote. Well, I know that they get so we have, money. No, but think, think, about, think about how silly that is. So we have to pay ourselves a lot of money or someone might be able to bribe us to selling our vote. But we have a campaign system where it's based on bribery. I need a lot of money. And I'll sell you my vote. Yeah. Like, what the heck is going So anyway, I know it's we... It's not we, so we, much locker room talk. It's not it's so much locker room like, talk. This, more general politics. General politics. We, we went a long time. This isn't necessarily what's up. Um, this is definitely another episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey guys, welcome back. Welcome uh, back to Off Brothers Script, Off Script. Episode yep. 22. Um, yeah. We're just talking about politics here. So we'll post this. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, this is a contentious topic right now. It's very current. So if you want to leave a comment, if you disagree with what we're saying, please let us know. I know this is a controversial thing. So uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Yeah, thanks. We'll see you next time.